What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. In our first story, James Eckhouse reads about a little girl who wants attention and about seven brothers who have magic powers. And Carl Weintraub will tell us about a little ant with a big, big voice. Major funding for story time is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting by the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. I don't like pepperoni, and I was thinking that something, you know, that everybody would like, like olives and mushrooms. I still say pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni. <laughs> well, pepperoni. Kino, you know, everybody has their favorite pizza, just like everybody has their favorite story. Oh, you know? gentlemen, gentlemen, it's clear to me that you two are not going to agree on the best pizza topping. Besides, it's time for our story time. All right. All right. But, you know, the only thing I like as much as story time is pizza. Oh, oh Kino, yeah. I know I like pizza too, but you know, Mara's right. I mean, I was invited here to, to read and not to talk about pizza. Okay, well, let's move on then. And now, while you take these books over to the story circle, I will push the button button. <laughs> Sounds good. Kino, what's the button for? The button? No, 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 no. The button button. Uh, just go on over there. You'll see. Uh, the reading is done at the story circle. Mm, okay, I don't think I like this very much. But... Good man. Okay, ready and there. <laughs> <laughs> don't let it get away, James. I... Careful. Now loosen up, folks. This red button button stops it before it goes too far. <laughs> That'll be fine, Kino. Well, hi everybody. Hi. How you doing? Hi. Okay. Does anybody have brothers and sisters? Yeah. You do. Do you ever feel like you're not getting a lot of attention and your brother and sister is getting a lot of attention? Yeah? Uh, I just have a brother. Uh-huh. Well, sometimes, you know, when you feel like somebody's getting a lot more attention than you do, I've got a good story about that. And the book is called Noisy Nora. And it's, the stories and the pictures are by Rosemary Wells. This is Noisy Nora. Jack had dinner early. Father played with Kate. Jack needed burping. So, Nora had to wait. First, she banged on the window. Then, she slammed the door. Bam! Then, she dropped her sister's marbles on the floor. What does that sound like? <laughs> Quiet, said her father. Hush, said her mom. Nora, said her sister, why are you so dumb? <laughs> Jack had gotten filthy. Mother cooked with Kate. <sighs> Jack needed drying off, so Nora had to wait. First, she knocked the lamp down. Crash! Then, she felled some chairs. Bam, 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 bam. Then, she took her brother's kite and flew it down the stairs. <laughs> Quiet, said her father. Hush, said her mom. Nora, said her sister, why are you so dumb? Jack was getting sleepy. Father read with Kate. Jack needed singing to, so Nora had to wait. I'm leaving, shouted Nora, and I'm never coming back. And they didn't hear a sound but a trap. 
Tra la 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 from Jack. Father stopped his reading. Mother stopped her song. Mercy said her sister, something's very wrong. No Nora in the cellar. No Nora in the tub. No Nora in the mailbox or hiding in a shrub. <laughs> She's left us, moaned her mother, as they sifted through the trash. But I'm back again, said Nora, with a monumental crash. <laughs> there she is, back again. Oh. She's very noisy. Why do you think she made so much noise? Because she wanted attention. That's right. Sometimes that's the only way you can do it. Hey, James, I got an idea. What about the story of the seven Chinese brothers? Oh, will you read it? Oh, please, James, will you read it? Read well, it, read it, please, please, please. Absolutely, Kino, sure. Come on, Mara, let's go. All right. Well, I've got a story here about seven Chinese brothers, and in it is the Great Wall of China. So it must be a very long story if it's got the Great Wall of China here, right? 4,000 miles long. Okay, and it was written by Margaret Mai, and it's illustrated by Jean and Motion Zung. It's the seven Chinese brothers, and they all have magic powers. Here we go. Once upon a time, when Qin Shi Huang was emperor of all of China, seven remarkable brothers lived together on a beautiful hillside. Now, they walked alike, they talked alike, they even looked alike so much that it was hard to tell one brother from the other brother. Now, each brother had something special about him. Each brother had one amazing power that was all his own. First brother's amazing ears could hear a fly sneeze mm -hmm. from a hundred miles away. Achoo! While second brother's amazing eyes could look right across the hundred miles and see the fly sitting on the Great Wall of China, sneezing and feeling very sorry for itself. <laughs> now, third brother was a man of unusual strength. He could walk across China in a straight line, lifting up any mountains that got in his way and putting them carefully back behind him. Fourth brother was strong, too, for he had bones of iron. Can you imagine having bones of iron, how heavy that would be? And they wouldn't break, and they wouldn't buckle or bend. Fifth brother had legs that could grow as tall and as thick as tree trunks. Legs stretch out. Yeah, they go real big. While sixth brother never, ever became too hot, no matter how hard he worked under the summer sun. And as for the seventh brother, well, you know what? He was the baby of the family. And all his six older brothers, they tried to keep him smiling and happy, for he was their youngest brother. And when he was unhappy, when the youngest brother was unhappy, he wept great, big, warm, salt tears. And each tear was large enough to drown an entire village. Can you imagine crying that much? The seven brothers lived very happily together. And seventh brother never once had anything to cry about. But one day, as they worked on their hillside, first brother lifted his head, and with his amazing ears on either side of it, and he said, oh, I can hear such a moaning and a groaning 100 miles away by the Great Wall of China. Second brother, take a look and tell me what all the trouble is about. Second brother turned his far-seeing eyes toward the Great Wall. I <gasps> cried. There's an enormous hole in the Great Wall of China. I see a hundred poor men working day and night, night and day. They look so tired and weak. Perhaps they're not allowed to sleep or eat until the great hole in the Great Wall of China is repaired. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, oh, ay, 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 I can't bear it, cried Seventh Brother, who was always hungry himself. He looked as if he might begin to cry in sympathy with the poor, hard-working men. They said, don't cry. You know what happens if he cries, right? Huge tears come out. <laughs> don't cry, said Third Brother quickly. I'll go and help them. So off he went as quickly as he could, and he got there in half a minute, less than no time. He set to work at once, tossing great stones from one hand to the other as if they were just feathers. And by the time darkness came, the hole was completely filled. And then third brother, he's very tired now, lay down to take a nap. But when the emperor heard that one single man had repaired the hole in one afternoon, he was not grateful at all. You'd think he'd be really happy, right? Indeed, he looked very worried. Mm. 
A man as powerful as that is more trouble than he's worth, thought the Emperor to himself. Strong men can be very useful to an Emperor, but this one, oh, this one is too strong. Hmm. What can I do, he thinks to himself. One army might not be enough to catch him. I'd better sing two. And so when Third Brother woke up from his nap, he found himself surrounded by two armies. <gasps> By the command of the Celestial Emperor, whose face is more dazzling than the rising sun, you are to be executed in the morning, proclaimed the generals of the armies. Take the prisoner to the palace of the Emperor, they ordered. Now, when he heard this, Third Brother burst into tears. <laughs> and a hundred miles away, on the beautiful hillside, First Brother heard Third Brother crying. Remember, he's got those great ears. Third brother must be in trouble, he exclaimed. Second brother looked far into the distance. <gasps> ay, 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 ay. Third brother has been taken to the palace. He's surrounded by two armies. They're going to execute him in the morning. No wonder he is crying. Don't worry, cried fourth brother, as he saw that seventh brother was about to cry, too. I will change places with him. The celestial emperor, whose face is more dazzling than the rising sun, can try cutting my head off as many times as he likes. Perhaps that will make him feel better. Remember that he's got that great, the iron, he's got bones of iron. So off he went as quickly as he could, and he got there in half a minute, less than no time. He sneaked in between the two armies to third brother, who was wide awake and waiting for him. So third brother went home, and fourth brother took his place. All the next day, the officers of the two armies tried over and over again to behead Fourth Brother, you know, <laughs> and sword after sword bent and broke on his bones of iron. And in the end, they were forced to confess to the mighty emperor, whose whisper was like the rumble of thunder, that they simply could not behead the prisoner. Oh, a man with bones of iron, roared the mighty emperor. Drown him in the sea tomorrow. Oh, when the fourth brother heard that, that he was going to be drowned, he became very upset. Bones of iron won't buckle or break, but they will sink, he thought to himself, and he burst into tears. <laughs> well, who do you think heard him? A hundred miles away, on the beautiful hillside, first brother heard fourth brother begin to cry. Fourth brother is crying, he said. Second brother looked into the distance, far beyond the hills, and said, <gasps> Tomorrow morning, they're going to drown Fourth Brother. No wonder he is crying. Don't worry, Fifth Brother said. I will change places with him. The mighty emperor, whose whisper is like the rumble of thunder, can try to drown me as many times as he likes. Perhaps that will make him feel better. And so off he went as quickly as he could, and he got there in half a minute, less than no time. He tiptoed past the guards to Fourth Brother, who was awake and waiting for him. Swiftly, they changed places, and Fourth Brother went home. Well, what happened? All the next day, the soldiers of the two armies, they tried to drown Fifth Brother. They threw him into the deep sea, but his legs grew so quickly, the water, it only came up to his knees. <laughs> they tried throwing him into deeper water, but the deep, deep water only reached just as far as his waist, finally. And finally, they threw him into the deepest part of the sea. But even then, the deepest part of the sea came only up to his neck. The waves broke under his chin. Ah, said Fifth Brother, smiling happily. How lovely and cool is the <laughs> deepest water of all. <laughs> He's more dangerous than I imagined, muttered the splendid emperor, whose merest glance was like a flash of lightning. He won't drown, but he might burn. Throw him into the fire tomorrow morning, he commanded. Oh, he, when he was told his fate, Fifth brother burst into tears. And who do you think heard? Far away on the beautiful hillside, first brother heard fifth brother's cries. Second brother looked right across a hundred miles to the Great Wall of China. <gasps> oh, ay, 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 he cried. Tomorrow morning they're going to burn fifth brother alive. No wonder he is crying. Don't worry, said sixth brother, afraid that seventh brother might begin to cry too. I will take his place. The splendid emperor, whose Mira's glance is like a flash of lightning. Can bake me all day long if he likes, he said with a shiver. Perhaps that will make him feel better. Remember Six Brothers' power? He can get as hot as he likes. Mm -hmm. So off he went as quickly as he could, and he got there in half a minute, less than no time. He tiptoed in between the two armies and found Fifth Brother, who was awake and waiting for him. So Fifth Brother went home, and Sixth Brother took his place. 
Well, the next day, the two armies ran backwards and forwards, bringing kindling wood and brushwood and bundles of dried grass, anything that would you know, burn a lot. And they built such a big fire that the smoke from it drifted from one end of China to the other. But Sixth Brother never, ever felt too hot. Basking in the heat of the blaze, he sighed with happiness. How kind of the noble emperor to let me warm myself in his very own fire, he cried. <laughs> he didn't get hot at all. The noble emperor, whose slightest frown made the land shake like an earthquake, was furious. Send for the royal archers, he ordered. In the morning, we will shoot this man full of arrows. Sixth brother burst into tears. And on the beautiful hillside, first brother heard. Sixth brother crying. Second brother, he asked, what, what do you see? <gasps> Ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-ay-
like hundreds of others, in every way but one. All the others had tiny ant voices. Effie's voice was like thunder. <laughs> Whenever she spoke, the whole nest of ants ran to get away from the noise. So one day, Effie set out to find someone who would listen to her. Before long, a caterpillar wriggled into sight. Nice day, isn't it? <laughs> said Effie. But she was talking to thin air. The caterpillar almost split his skin in his hurry to escape. <laughs> Next minute, a butterfly landed beside her. Hello there! Effie boomed. But the butterfly was blown away. And Effie was alone again. Disappointed, but still hopeful, Effie climbed a grass stalk for a different view. Where is someone to talk to? She wondered. <laughs> Her voice shook a web nearby, and a spider crawled out to see what she had caught. How do you do? Who are you? Effie began. <laughs> but the web snapped. Without a word, the spider parachuted to safety and was gone. <laughs> Effie went on for a long time without meeting anyone at all. By and by, she stopped to rest. To her surprise, the rock she was lying on suddenly sprouted legs. So it wasn't a rock. What, what was it, do you think? Beetle. A beetle. A beetle. I'm, I'm going to be an entomologist when I grow up. And you can tell. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello there, said Effie. Have you time for a chat? <laughs> but the beetle flipped in fright. He spun in a dizzy circle, snapped to his feet, and scurried away. When she met a grasshopper, all Effie said was, Hi! <laughs> Even so, the grasshopper didn't stay. Doesn't anyone want to listen to me? Effie yelled an to the treetops. An anteater, maybe? <laughs> what an idea. Just then, the grasshopper came leaping back. You've changed your mind, said Effie, hopefully. But the grasshopper shook his head and zigzagged out of sight. Then the beetle ran her way. Welcome back said Effie with open arms, but the beetle scurried silently past. Have you come to talk to me? Effie asked the spider who was next. In a time like this, gasped the spider spinning by, and the butterfly passed in a flap. The caterpillar wriggled right up to Effie. Run for your life, he puffed. Effie raced after them all. She raced till she reached the hundreds of ants who had run away from her that morning. They were crowded around their nest, glancing fearfully at the sky. Effie felt the ground shake. She saw a spreading shadow cover the ground. She looked up. A huge foot was about to crush them all. Effie took a deep breath. Stop, she roared. Hold it right there. Um, not to where, <laughs> said an elephant, looking around in surprise. Here, bellowed Effie. Please watch where you step. Watch your step, watch your step, echoed all the other little ants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oops said the elephant, suddenly noticing them all below. Dub, just I'm so sorry, she said, and stepped nimbly aside. Effie whooped, and the ants cheered faintly as the elephant's foot and the near swish of her trunk missed them all. <laughs> Who spoke up? asked the elephant. Effie waved an antenna to introduce herself, 
And the elephant lowered her trunk to the ground in greeting. Effie climbed up as if the trunk were a staircase, and she and the elephant saw eye to eye. I don't suppose you have time for a chat, <laughs> she asked. Effie and the elephant found they liked each other <laughs> enormously. <laughs> they talked for the rest of the day, and for days and weeks and months after, they met to talk of things large and small. And before too long, large numbers of elephants could be seen treading carefully through the grass, watching their step and chatting with their new friends. Can we give a big Effie thank you to James and Carl? And okay. Kino. Well, on the count of three, we'll thank everyone, all right? One, two, three. Thank, thank you, Carl and James! And... Kino. And Kino. Kino. <laughs> yeah. Did you bring some books for our friends at home to enjoy? Oh, oh, uh, I brought some more of my favorite, favorite books to share with my amigo. Oh, sure. good. Oh, this must be one of them. Yeah, there's one. Uh, this one's also from China. It's called Lan Po Po, and I really, really like it. It's written and illustrated by Ed Young. This is kind of like Little Red Riding Hood, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, another book that I like, because it's weird, <laughs> is The Tub People, written by oh. Pam Conrad. Yes, The Tub People. Well, thank you all for joining us on our story time. And please come by again. And until then, keep a story in your heart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, amigos. Hasta la vista. <laughs>are Noisy Nora, The Seven Chinese Brothers, Effie, Lon Po Po, and The Tub People. You can find these and other books at your local library. Major funding for Storytime is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. By the annual financial support from viewers like you. And by the National Endowment for Children's Educational Television. Storytime is a production of KCET Los Angeles.